This is the fourth in our series of videos on individuals who seek God, but they're only surviving, not thriving. This is deliverance prayer for the ungodly gyroscope. It tends to be extremely intense for some individuals. You may wish to lie down and be in a comfortable place before we move on into the prayer. And be sure and allow yourself significant time afterwards to recoup before engaging in the affairs of the day if there is something intense. Typically, it takes days for you to stop feeling what's going on in your brain and more days before your body gets over the readjustment. That said, let me reiterate that this is only for those who are in a blood covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. You're free to watch this without engaging. Simply with your spirit, let God know that you're observing. You are also free to buy in with your spirit. Tell the Lord that you want to participate in this cleansing. Without further ado, Most High God, righteous judge of the universe, and also our loving Father, I come to you on behalf of each individual who is watching this and choosing to participate in a cleansing process. And I speak as an attorney on their behalf, a priest after the order of Melchizedek in your royal priesthood. And I bring accusation against your ancient enemy that he has leveraged the sin of mankind in order to establish an ungodly gyroscope or to damage the gyroscope that you established originally in this individual. We own our responsibility of human actions. I ask you to open the books. From the beginning of time to the present in every branch of the family line, the bloodline, the marriage lines, the adoptive lines, and every covenant line, be it religious or civil or social. Wherever there has been an open door for the enemy, we include that in our legal process. And for the sin, rebellion, and iniquity, for the covenants and curses and symbols and ceremonies that are found in the record, we bring all of them before your throne, admitting heinous human sins against the Most High, acknowledging that we deserve to have the problems that we have because we and our forefathers have sinned. Having said that, however, we claim the mercy that Christ offers us in applying the strength of his death, burial, and resurrection against all of that iniquity. And I ask now that in a single word from your throne, you would blot out everything, including the covenants and agreements with death and with Sheol, that there be no protection and provision left for your ancient enemy and all his minions who would seek to guard this iniquitous device in this person's brain. I ask you further to cut off every connection with other gyroscopes and other individuals, gyroscopes that are on land, gyroscopes in the water, under the earth, and in death and shield itself. Let there be a complete isolation of this device. And Father, the spinning of this device has wound up many threads and strings of other people's lives and of time itself. If there is any time, timelines, portion of time that have been substituted from someone else for this individual, if there's been any times that they've rejected, if there's been other people's times that they've reached out and claimed, and it's all part of the mass of threads around this ungodly gyroscope, I ask you to sever, 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 dismantle, detach, and isolate this gyroscope from the times of other human beings and of other spirit beings. Leave it disconnected from people, from the forces below. I ask you to remove every demonic guard 
and any alien human spirit that may be attached to this that is shared or paired with any other device anywhere else in the world. Strip it away. And now remove in full this device from spirit, soul, from brain, from birthright. Remove any mirror image of it. Remove any substitute, any backup. Remove the whole of everything that did not come from you, was not designed by your hand, is not a blessing from you to this individual. Pull it out by its roots. Remove the very deepest roots that goes down into death and shield itself. And then purge this individual spirit, soul, body, and birthright. Apply the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the new covenant that is not a covenant with death, to cleanse all four portions of their humanity. Apply the salt of healing to the deep wounds that have been established in the brain by the extraction of this device. Break all programming that triggers the ungodly gyroscope and calls it back into existence, every facsimile of it. I ask you to break, 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 break the unholy neurological patterns. Prune the synapses that have been used for this so that every trigger remains useless when it lands in the ear or the eye gate. And then bring the oil of the Holy Spirit to sanctify the place where God's own gyroscope is supposed to be established, a different place and a different positioning than the devil's own gyroscope. And Father, we lift up to you the majesty of the picture that we have in Ezekiel 1, of the wheels within wheels that moved at the speed of light, surrounded by eyes so that there is no backside that they can't see, no lack of peripheral vision, that there is sight everywhere all the time. They move in perfect synergy and synchronicity with the spirit and with the cherubim and there's flashes of lightning that come and go. That picture is magnificent. The gyroscopes that God has designed that he's given to the male worship creatures in his creation. And as each one of us are to know you both as female and male, as each one of us is part of the bride of Christ, fully female, interfacing with the maleness of Jesus Christ, and yet each one of us is also fully male as a son of the Most High, a brother of Christ. We ask now that you would complete the dynamic of the compass and the gyroscope, both perfectly aligned within the brain to the cornerstone of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, the true son of the living God, who was born of a virgin, who died, was raised again three days later, and entered into the glory of God. Settle that gyroscope where it belongs and begin it spinning in the right direction with the right speed. And then, Father, in the midst of this complex surgery, I ask you to weave the timeline of this individual together into the gyroscope at exactly the right place and the right speed. Let no strand of their timeline be exempted from this subordination to the gyroscope of heaven. Let time, their time, 
be defined. Even in the past, the portion of their life that they've already lived, that is not beyond your redemption. And we ask that the gyroscope from the hand of God would align and sanctify the past life that they've lived with all of its blotches, all of its blemishes, all of its pain, all of its broken places, all the areas where they've rejected their time. Reassemble their timeline, I ask, and allow the dominion of the male gyroscope to define time rather than it being defined by the enemy's gyroscope. And going forward, Father, into the future, position the gyroscope so that their future timeline is all going to be under the dominion of the male gyroscope, the speed of which defines the movement of time. And now, Father, I come to you on the basis of proportionality. You alone know whether the individual I'm speaking to is young or midlife or towards their promotion. But I present to you the progression of proportion in the nation of Israel. There was a time where they did not worship you in any building at all. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob built altars in different places, but there was no permanence in the shape of their worship. The long period in Egypt, there was no building. But then at the tabernacle, you established a building with precise proportions. The holy place was one half the size, or the holy place was twice the size of the holy of holies. It was half the size. There was a two to one ratio. That was the proportion that was appropriate for the nation of Israel at that point in their maturity. Centuries passed. The tabernacle was relegated to history and you designed a temple in heaven and gave new proportions for a new chapter in Israel's history. And the proportions were that the Holy of Holies was two units and the holy place was three. It was a three to two ratio instead of a two to one. Father, I don't understand those proportions, but I know that we go further on to the ultimate temple, the New Jerusalem, and it is now cubic. There is only the Holy of Holies. There is no holy place, much less an entrance to the holy place. And I present to you this progression of proportions and ask that for this individual for whom I am praying and ministering, that you would establish the correct proportion between the compass and the gyroscope in accordance with their life and where they are in their spiritual journey towards you. The cornerstone never changes. Jesus Christ is the same proportions yesterday, today, and forever. But I ask that the female compass and the male gyroscope be proportioned as you would have it, exactly in alignment with their journey with you. And now, Father, I ask you to bring the whole of their body, their soul and their birthright, under subordination to this specific divine device, this pair of devices. Let the compass and the gyroscope move in dominion, creating new patterns in every fractal of the human body, creating new rhythms, new cycles, new orientation. Let the government of God be established in their body through the compass and the gyroscope that are definitive in their expression of the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ. Now seal these things, Holy Spirit, so there can be no tampering from your ancient enemy, I ask in Jesus' name.